All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, everyone, as I sadly predicted, the Neil Young effort to cancel Joe Rogan has spiraled. Several other artists and podcasters have come out saying they're pulling their product, and the pressure is already beginning to ramp up. Spotify stood tall to Neil Young. Can it do so if this thing really snowballs? I have no answer to that question. But something I immediately was suspicious of when it came to Neil Young was this. How much of this is actually Neil Young? How much of this is big money interest behind the scenes? The thing is, I've seen a lot of high-profile cancellation efforts in my time, and in almost every single case, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. The people speaking out may be doing so organically, but it also happens to just coincide with the financial or oligarchic interests of some very, very rich people. Like when these fake groups are funded to point out Fox News misinformation, and then the people who happen to publish it always work over at CNN. You guys get the idea. There is more than meets the eye. So let's start with Neil Young, where this entire thing began. The original impetus for Neil Young's demand was a letter that he posted on social media saying that Spotify can either have Neil Young or they can have Joe Rogan. But as I noted in our original segment, that letter was posted and then almost immediately deleted, which is really odd. It raises questions. Who is demanding this? Is it Neil Young? Or is it the people who own his music? You see, a recent trend in the music business is that iconic artists such as Neil Young sell their catalogs to big money groups who then reap the profits in perpetuity. Young actually sold his catalog in January of 2021 to a company called Hypnosis. Now, Hypnosis is a $1 billion company which recently announced an ownership agreement with Blackstone. Well, Blackstone, I know a lot about that company. You may recall their efforts that I've put here on the show to turn America into a nation of renters and take over single family housing, as I've covered on many monologues. But they have interests everywhere. See, my interest here is perked. Blackstone, BlackRock, and these big private equity giants are ruthless in their pursuit of profit, and they are savvy political players who know how to play the game. They have all sorts of ties to the pharmaceutical industry, including, as I just showed you, announcing the CEO of Pfizer, joining them as a senior advisor. Did any of this play a role? Who knows? But do you really think it's a coincidence that days after Neil Young's music was pulled off Spotify, that he debuts a four-month free trial for any person who wants to sign up for Amazon Music? Amazon Music, who has struggled to gain market share, and of course has long-standing connections with all of the big money people in the game that I just talked about. Young claims he's not personally getting any money from the deal. Okay, is Blackstone? Is his catalog? What about the other company? Those are great questions. I'm sure our amazing media is going to probe that tomorrow. Part of why all of digging into this money matters is that the music landscape has changed dramatically. New streaming music data actually has broken down by Ted Gioa. It shows old songs now represent 70% of the entire U.S. market. And the new music market actually is shrinking. In fact, in 2020, the 200 most popular tracks on streaming now account for less than 5% of all streams. In other words, most people are just listening to the same stuff. This is why, with Neil Young, there has been a mad dash in recent years to acquire the catalogs of old established players like him by big money. In the last few years, Bob Dylan, Stevie Nicks, Calvin Harris, Shakira, Barry Manilow, others, they all sold their catalogs to private equity. Giants. In 2020 alone, $4.67 billion of music catalogs changed hands globally, with almost every single major hedge fund in the world getting in on the action. The point of all of this is to open your eyes to see possibilities that you may not have imagined. At first, it was simple just Neil Young taking a stand, right? Well, maybe. But now, a lot of people with big money and a big agenda who just so happened would profit if Rogan went down, or like Amazon or Pfizer or Blackstone or others who consider him a thorn in their side. The problem now is that even if this was astroturfed in the beginning, it is on for real. Joni Mitchell now has come out. She said that she's not going to uh, stand, so she's going to stand in solidarity with Neil Young. Then she says delete or cancel Spotify. Others that trended on Twitter for nearly the entire weekend. Perhaps the biggest blow, though, to Spotify, at least on the podcasting side that's come so far, is Brene Brown or the of the former TED Talk fame. Put that up there on the screen. Brown is announcing she's going to, quote, not be releasing any podcast until further notice. And as someone was quick to point out, it's ironic, given that her podcast description says she wants conversations that are, quote, teaching me, challenging me, confusing me, maybe even ticking me off a little bit. Well, I guess not too much challenge in there, huh, Brene? I expect it to get worse. An hour after I originally finished writing this monologue, Spotify exclusives, Harry and Meghan came out to say they've expressed concerns to Spotify. 
of which they have a big deal with. And then Spotify CEO Daniel Ek, he put out a statement saying, quote, we've heard the criticism. We are implementing chances to help combat misinformation. The statement detailed how Spotify will now add a content advisory to any podcast episode, which includes discussion about COVID and will direct people to a resource that has up-to-date information. They said they will also, quote, test ways to highlight our platform rules and our creator and public tools to raise awareness around what's acceptable and helps creators understand their own accountability. Yeah, okay. I've seen this movie before. You give in to the mob and you give them an inch, they will keep coming. Will Spotify really be able to withstand this pressure? Who knows? Principle's not going to save you in these instances. I wish it would, but I'm not naive. Only money will. In the beginning, it was actually simple. Rogan has far exceeded Spotify's own expectations in getting actual people to come over to the app and has increased overall podcast listenership. It's why he got paid what he got paid. And Neil Young simply didn't stack up to that economic value. But you add up enough people, it becomes a much, much, much tougher decision. Spotify knows that. So do the hedge funds with all kinds of conflicts of interest. And just like with the rest of the U.S. economy, they're the ones that really run the show. So hold on to your seats and you really hope that Joe prevails in this one. He is up against more powerful interests than many people even realize here. I mean, isn't it fascinating, Crystal, to see that, you know, we cover... Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.